grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray on my heart to print your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. While Emily and I were at the Astros game a few weeks ago, there was a contest at the door. There was a decent sized container filled with peanuts, and they claimed that whoever guessed correctly the amount of peanuts in the container could possibly win season tickets to the Astros. Even though it was probably mostly just a scam to get our phone number, email address, and other information, we couldn't resist giving it a try. Emily and I both put in our guesses, along with our personal information, and didn't think much about it. We continued along and had a good time at the game, and wouldn't you know it, the Rangers won. Well, this past week, I got a strange phone call from a number that I didn't recognize, which isn't unusual for me. The person on the other side of the phone informed me that I was a finalist of some sort for the tickets. But there was a catch, of course, there would be a drawing of all the other finalists to see who would actually get the tickets. But they also informed me that they wanted me to come in and talk with their travel company or whatever business it was that was putting on the uh, contest to come and hear about some vacation opportunities that they wanted to sell me. I assured them that I was not interested in driving all the way to Houston just to hear about something that they wanted to sell me. They had told me that I, if they had told me that I had won the tickets, then certainly I would have jumped in my car immediately and went right on down. Yet simply asking me to come for a meeting, in my opinion, was not worth my time. I had better things to do in preparing for BPS, the sermon, Bible class, along with a wide list of other things. Not only was I busy, but I also just didn't care to hear whatever it was that they wanted to talk to me about. In our parable this morning, we hear a similar story. A man was having a banquet and he sent out his servant to confirm the invitations to those who had already been invited in advance. They responded with a myriad of different excuses. One said that he had to go and see a field that he had already bought. And another said that he had to examine some oxen again that he had already bought. And another simply said that he has a wife and is unable to come. We hear how this man has put together this magnificent, wonderful banquet and invited many to come. And yet, when it came time, they all had plain excuses. He didn't just invite a few like the finalists, I guess, at the amount of peanuts. He invited a lot of people. He didn't tell them that the banquet was a possibility, that they were finalists to get into the banquet. He told them that it was ready. In other words, he told them, come and get it. And they had the same reaction that I had at the prospect of the tickets. They came up with lame excuses. After all, even today, no one would ever buy a piece of land or cattle without first examining it. And whose wife doesn't love a big fancy banquet? Most of us probably wouldn't get out of bed at just the possibility of something happening. But when something is guaranteed, then we'll usually go for it. If they told me I had won the tickets, then I would have immediately drove down to Houston. Yet even the guarantee of the banquet was not enough for the invited guests in our parable. The same was true of the Pharisees to whom this parable is directed. 
They were descendants of the Old Covenant who were well educated and knew the promises of the Messiah. And yet when given the opportunity to follow Jesus, they came up with excuses. They didn't believe in him and so they rejected his invitation. They ate with him on earth, but they will not eat with him in heaven. They rejected Christ and his invitation, and as the parable says, For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. The Pharisees are the ones who are invited. They didn't come because they didn't believe, and they didn't care about the feast. They are more concerned with earthly treasures and accolades. But those who are attending are those who are considered undesirable. Once the responses were reported to the master, he was angry and told his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. They were brought into the banquet because they had faith. They were chosen by the master because they believed and desired the banquet. They are the ones who aren't concerned with earthly things because they have nothing. They are the ones who are deformed by worldly standards and yet they are still welcomed to the master's feast. Along with them, the foreigners were also invited to the feast. The master sent his servant out into the highways and hedges to compel everyone to come in. He didn't tell them they might be admitted to the banquet. He told them, come and eat. It was a sure thing. We are poor and crippled and blind and lame. We are the foreigners from the highways and hedges. We are Gentiles who have been welcomed to the feast. We come with our impurities and deformities, and we are welcomed to the table to eat with the Lord of heaven and earth. We come with our sin and shame and unworthiness, and we are welcome to the heavenly banquet, which has no end. We are invited to the heavenly feast, not as a possibility that this thing might happen, but with the certainty that this will indeed happen. As we hear the wonderful life-giving invitation proclaimed from the pulpit, we are given faith to trust that this feast is prepared and waiting for us. It's not some scam as I assume the Astros tickets were. It's the real thing. Just as Jesus truly died on the cross and rose on the third day, so also he has indeed prepared a place for us in heaven. He has prepared a glorious banquet feast and he wants us to be there. He has sent his messengers to proclaim this wonderful invitation to us and we gladly hear the word. We continue to hear all the wonderful things that God has done for us and how he has chosen us to attend the banquet. In our poor, crippled, blind, and lame state, he has bid us to come to his banquet. He provides for all our needs of body and soul as we partake of this holy meal. We are nourished through the life-giving word and sacraments. As we attend church every Sunday, we are given an appetizer, if you will, as our souls are nourished with the Word of God, which proclaims the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus for our sake. We hear this life-giving Word, and we are assured of the banquet that awaits us in heaven. We have a foretaste of the heavenly banquet as we hear how Christ loves us and absolves us of all of our sins. When we hear the words of absolution proclaimed, we hear the words of the servant telling us that the master of the house desires that we be at his banquet. We hear that we are made worthy to attend the banquet, not from our own doing or merit, but simply on account of the master's love. In spite of our deficiencies, he brings us to the banquet and makes us whole. He washes us in his blood and makes us presentable and clean. In the waters of holy baptism, he claims us as his own and he pours, he prepares us for the banquet. He cleanses us from all our sins and makes us perfect and holy guests. He continues to cleanse us as we partake the Lord's Supper. We partake of this heavenly feast here on earth 
as a foretaste of the heavenly peace which awaits us. We receive the very body and blood of Christ, which is given to the holy, which is not given to the holy, but rather to the poor miserable sinners who are in need of forgiveness. As we receive this foretaste of the feast to come, our faith is strengthened and we are reminded of the feast that awaits us in heaven. If left to our own devices, we would come up with all kinds of excuses, even better than the ones that the men in the parable came up with. But thanks be to God that we have been given the gift of faith. We have the sure and certain faith that we know that we are invited to the feast and we are able to attend on account of the life-giving work of Christ, who is the bread of life. He has given us himself for our salvation, and he will bring us to the banquet. We are blessed, and we are able to joyfully proclaim, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. The Master tells us, come, for everything is now ready. Without any excuse or dragging of feet, we are made to come on account of the saving work of Christ. There we shall see the glory of our Redeemer's face, the Lord awaited story of heavenly joy takes place. The patriarchs shall meet us, the prophets, holy band, apostles, martyrs greet us in that celestial land. Come, for everything is now ready. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard, and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory. 